Happy Wednesday, everyone. My name is Yi Ling Zhuang. I'm a water resources a regional specialized agent in University of Florida IFAS Extension. Welcome to the Water Wednesday. Water Wednesday is a webinar series about Florida's precious resource, water. Every Wednesday afternoon at two o'clock Eastern time, we will live stream a 30 minute talk about Florida's water and what we can do to protect it. We host our webinar series on Zoom and broadcast to Facebook Live. We, uh, we have attendees joining us all over the country. Please put in the chat box and tell us where you are viewing this webinar. If you are viewing it on Facebook, please be aware of scammers. This webinar series is free. Please do not click any links that are not posted by the admin. We have a theme for every month. This month, we focus on water conservation. Last Water Wednesday, I went through the water supply and the future water demand of Florida. And today, we will uh, focus on water conservation inside your home. Tomorrow is the Earth Day. We have this opportunity to partner with the city of Sanford to celebrate Earth Day. So if you are a city of Sanford resident, you will have a chance to receive a free shower head. So Ms. Tina, would you please give more details about this special Earth Week event? Absolutely. Well, I'm Tina McIntyre, Florida Friendly Landscaping Agent at the UF IFAS Extension in Seminole County. And we're very lucky to be partnering with the city of Sanford, which is just north of Orlando for any of you zooming in from other places, um, to be able to offer this WaterWise seminal event. And anybody who's willing to, to drive uh, to a, you know, the, the pickup location is actually eligible to get a free shower head. Um, there are a few requirements. So you do have to listen to our experts here for until the Water Wednesday is over today. And then um, we have to complete a survey. So later today or tomorrow, I'll be emailing you and you will receive a survey, very quick and short, um, just asking you a few questions about what you learned and what you intend to implement. And then once that survey is completed, we will email any winners on Friday, the 23rd of April. And um, let you know that you won and disclose the location for to come pick up the shower heads. And I'll let you know they are nice shower heads. So definitely take a minute to complete that survey and you know enjoy what our guest speakers are gonna bring to you today. So thank you, Yilin. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, we are also streaming on Facebook Live. Unfortunately, the ones that are on Facebook Live are not gonna be eligible. It's only through Zoom, um, which records your attendance. So, um, you know, feel free to ask any questions you may have in the chat, and we look forward to our guest speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tina. And for our uh, Facebook Live viewers, I did post the Zoom link on the chat box. So if you are City of Sanford resident and you want this shower head, you still have a chance to register this event and join on, on Zoom. And now let's move on and we'll introduce our guest speaker for today's talk, Saving Water Inside Your Home. And our guest speaker is uh, Mr. Jim Davis. He's the County Extension Director of uh, Sumter County and Hernando County. We also have our second guest speaker, Ms. Luann Duncan. She is the Family and the Consumer Sciences Agent in Sumter County. So now let's welcome our guest speaker. Okay, Yellen, just to confirm that you see my slide, okay? Yes, it looks uh, pretty. <laughs> wonderful. So thank you everyone for joining us on Water Wednesday and thank you, Yelena, for inviting us today. And so we have some very basic tips on saving water indoors. So I'm gonna cover a few today and Luann's gonna cover some very important information on mold. So I always like to start off with just a little, some little stats about water. Um, now, 
This information is provided by the EPA. Now the average central Floridian uses about 104 gallons per day, each day. Now look on the average nationwide accounts for about 90 gallons per day. So we're a little bit, a little bit over the nationwide account. And uh, that's very important. It's very important for people to lower their water use in Florida, whether it be indoors or outdoors. Um, uh, we have about 90% of our drinking water comes from our Florida aquifer. And if you've ever heard about that, that's one of actually one of the largest, most productive aquifers in the world. So it covers Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. So when people come to Florida, uh, they may not know about that, and they may not know about the water conservation practices we use in Florida. Um, other states um, that I know of really do have very little or not at all uh, water conservation practices. So it's important for these new residents coming to the Sunshine State to learn about these practices, as well as people who've been living here for a very long time. So nationwide households account for about 10,000 gallons of water wasted each year. And so this water waste, it could be, it could be, it could range from anywhere between non-efficient shower heads, uh, which all of y'all will receive a water efficient one, and um, even your sinks. So there's easy ways to replace the heads on those where it's uh, more efficient for gallons per minute, but also the leaks. Um, leaks are, uh, happen all the time in household appliance, whether it be kitchen sink or shower head. So it's very important to make sure there's no leaks on that as, for, as well as your toilets as well. So a lot of the toilets are water efficient nowadays, um, but you still wanna make sure that that toilet is not leaking and that it's fixed correctly. So by fixing leaks, you can save about 10% on your water bill. And in some places in the United States and some places here in Florida, you pay for your water. And so that's very cost efficient. And also uh, for energy efficiency as well uh, for a lot of places. So shower heads, we're gonna talk about some shower heads. It's really good if you can get a water sense label, uh, efficient um, shower head out there, um, something that provides no more than two gallons per minute. And now the average shower head uses about two and a half. Uh, if it uses more than that, and that's a little bit too much. And so we're going to show you how to replace your shower head. Uh, it's very easy. We're going to have to show you how to fix the leaks on it. And so, like I said, 20% of water is caused by a showering, resulting in use of 40 gallons per day. And um, leaks are a big part of that. And also, you need to be aware of your shower time. So, um, you know, if if, you, if you're taking 30 minute showers, that's too long. I know some of the teenagers like to take long showers. Um, so if you, can, if you can bring that down to you know, five to 10 minutes, five minutes ideally, that saves a lot of water. And uh, so that's very, one simple practice that every homeowner can do. It's just to shorten their, shorten their shower time. Okay? And now some homeowners may not be aware of how to figure out, okay, well, how much water is my bathroom faucet, is my shower head using? So uh, I'm gonna give you a little example here. And this is something I did in my own house because um, when I got married, I moved in with my wife. So I had no idea what these bathroom faucets were. I don't know if they were water efficient or not. And so there's a very simple test. So what you wanna do is you wanna get a good measuring cup. Now, obviously if you're doing it for a shower, you're gonna want something a little bit bigger um, to hold a little bit more water, but get a good measuring cup that's easy to read. So run it for about 10, you know, turn on the faucet, run it for about 10 seconds. And you wanna multiply the water in the container by six. Now you convert this to gallons and you can go online to figure out that conversion. It's pretty easy. And that'll give you the rate. So for example, in this cup here, my own sink, uh, I had three, had three cups in about 10 seconds. So I converted that to gallons, so 0 0.188, and times that by six, and you get 1.13. So 1.1 gallons uh, per minute, which is a low flow. So those bathroom faucets, I didn't really need to change out. They were, they were water efficient. My shower heads were not water efficient, and I'll show you those in a second. Um, but you know, whenever you get done with your water, just take that water out. Don't, go, don't wash it down the sink. Now go out there and give your plants a drink. So the shower heads. <clears throat> so the, the EPA says that every home retrofitted was retrofitted with these efficient shower heads. We can save about 2.9 billion in utility bills and over about 260 billion gallons of water. 
annually. So replacing your old shower heads with, the, for example, water sense, water efficient shower head can save about 2,700 gallons per year. Okay? All of that adds up. And retrofitting is extremely easy. Don't let it intimidate you. Every homeowner can do it. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there throughout the state. Um, Tina can probably provide some information about where y'all are live, where, where we're at on my side of the state. We have the Southwest Florida Water Management District. There's the South Florida Water Management District, St. John's. Um, all these water management districts are very, very good. They have a lot of great information on there. So I just have the Southwest Florida Water Management District on there. But y'all have your local water management district. Please visit their website. Uh, they have a lot of great information. All these districts do on water conservation. So the shower head leaks. Um, now I'm gonna go step by step and I'm also gonna show you a video um, for this. So first of all, you need an adjustable wrench or pliers and joint sealer or tape, I call it Teflon tape. And um, I do a lot of outside irrigation. That's my wheelhouse. And this is my best friend is that Teflon tape for a lot of irrigation, um, stop irrigation leaks and so on. But it's really, really good for stopping leaks in, inside the house as well. So you wanna, um, uh, turn off the water, not turn off the water, but turn off the water, obviously. And you want to use the wrench to take off the shower head. Um, you want to use a cloth to avoid scratching. Clean the heads. Now, in the video that I'm going to show you, you're going to see them use a toothbrush. That's okay. I'd probably use something a little bit more abrasive uh, just to get, especially if it has some of this old uh, glue or whatever they used on there. Uh, tapes been in there for a long time. A little regular toothbrush is not going to cut it. Uh, so you want something a little bit more brace. You want, you want to make sure that those threads are as clean as possible. Okay? You don't want anything on there. You want to make sure it's clean. That's with irrigation, working inside with appliances. Make sure you have clean surfaces. And so apply that sealer or tape. Uh, and then, you know, wrap it around very tight. Install the shower head and turn on the water to test. Make sure you don't have any leaks. So here's a video that I'm going to show you. Hopefully it plays okay. These are all your materials that you'll need. You don't want to scratch your appliance. And twist it on. So whenever you get your new shower heads, cake. And like I said, you know, going back, um, like I said, make sure you use a little bit more abrasive toothbrush. And whenever you screw the shower head on, make sure it's nice and secure and tight. Make sure you don't overdo it and strip it. Okay? You just want to make sure it's nice and tight and secure. So um, this Teflon tape that, I, that we use, um, it's very important uh, that you um, put something on these threads to stop the leaks. So you can see this one, this is border on. Perfect tape, no leaks, right? So this one I actually put on just for, this is for photographic purposes, just to show you. So you can see how we screw this in and there's a constant leak, it goes all the way down. And this is simply the fact that there's nothing on these threads to stop that. So something very simple, right? Something very simple to stop these uh, leaks. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to cover, aside from the shower heads, um, are your water meters. Now, some homeowners are on a, on a well, um, some homeowners are in a development area. So if you happen to be one of these people who do have a water meter, uh, first of all, um, you should know where it's at <laughs> inside around your yard. So I live in one of the communities that do. And so my water meter is actually on the easement, you know, near the sidewalk, the public sidewalk on the house. And it's a little box. Um, if, you, if you don't know where it's at, um, you need to find it if you do have one. And if you do have one, uh, I want to know when's the last time you've been in there and checked it <laughs> because um, it's just like an irrigation valve box. You want to make sure you take it out and clean it. And the reason why you want to do this is because if for, for whatever reason, uh, if there happens to be a water break inside your house, one of the main uh, shutoffs there is at your water meter. So you want to make sure that that's easily accessible okay, uh, and easy to read. Everything's clean, everything out of there. Uh, if you haven't been there in a while, just make sure you open it and be careful to make sure there's no critters in there. But these little water meters are very 
good for detecting leaks. Okay, so first of all, you want to make sure um, that turn off turn off all your water in your house. Okay, you, you want to check your water meter and record the week reading. Wait for thirty minutes, read the meter, and if there's you know, and turn on your water, read the meter. If there's a change, then there's a leak. So one easy thing that a lot of these new water meters have is this little thing right here. So they come in different colors, blue, black, red. Um, so whenever you turn off your water, okay, everything's off. If there's a leak inside your house, this little thing will be turning round and round and round and round. And so that'll let you know if you have a leak. Um, so I can't stress that enough. Just find your meter uh, if that applies to you. And so this is a meter, uh, a leak indicator. So if you don't have that leak indicator, that meter is going to move, right? Because you have a leak. Uh, but like I said, most of these meters now do have these little leak indicators. And um, in a lot of these cases, you will need to contact a plumber um, if you can't solve the problem. So the before we move on to Luann, you know, one of the things um, that, um, that I always tell homeowners too for saving water or just water prevention in your house, because this kind of leads to what, what Luann's going to talk about as far as, as mold goes. Um, some houses have a um, primary shutoff, a solo shutoff, if that applies to you. Um, so that can is usually located at the water meter, and you have this big metal rod that you have to turn. You can't do it with your hands. So make sure you have, get one of those if you don't have one. And um, but uh, I would suggest if you don't already have one to have another shutoff source. And for example, mine, I call it my primary. My water meter is my secondary. So my primary water shutoff is right next to my house, right next to my air conditioner. So uh, so if a water breaks, a pipe breaks, I can run outside, it's a ball valve, and I just turn it, and no more water. As opposed to getting metal rod, going outside there, running out in the street, time, you time wasted. And uh, I unfortunately found out that bad lesson um, uh, in the past. Uh, so um, where we did have a pipe break in the house and a flood of three of my rooms. So, um, so that getting there quickly helps. And that's a ton of wasted water. And what happens is now you have water in your house and you can lead to other bad things such as mold. So um, uh, there's other sorts of water saving devices out there. There's faucets with these cool little aerators that you can unscrew and push back in. It really doesn't affect the, 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 uh, the flow, the spray, the power, if you will. So on some of these, they're very easy. They may need some cleaning in the future. And uh, I'm not gonna show the video on this, but. Also, your toilets, just make sure you check for leaks. There's these little dye tablets you can put in to check, check for leaks um, out there to save some water. And uh, obviously, you want to, whenever you do that, um, uh, you want to put these in your tank. And if you still see some water, if you see some blue dye in that toilet, then you know you have a leak. Several others, several places you have a leaks are near this little. Um, this little nut right here where the handle and the flapper. So those are some common areas that you have some leaks. So if that happens, um, make sure you, to go ahead and replace that. And uh, like I said, just other water saving tips, brush while, you know, while brushing your teeth or shaving, turn the water off. Avoid using hot water in most cases, you'll save energy as well. And you know, again, taking short showers, you don't have to fill that water tub all the way up for a bath, just fill it about a third and um, operate your dishwasher when there's a full load and only use the garbage disposal when necessary. And uh, just take your paper towel, clean off the food, right? Clean it off thoroughly, stick it in the dishwasher. You don't need to turn on the water and wash it off in most cases, okay? And uh, so those are some simple tips that, um, that I can share with you. Very easy that everyone can do. So hopefully you can implement some of these, um, some of these into your house. So, if you have any questions, put them in the chat, and um, I'm going to pass this to Luann.
Okay, just want to verify that my screen is showing also. Right. Okay, and um, I was away on, on um, last week, and just to clarify, I'm going to be talking about saving water inside the home also. Um, just an update, Jim and I do another program together where I follow up after him and talk a little bit about mold and how important, um, you know, controlling those water leaks are with that. If you have any interest in that information, it's a separate program. But I am going to be talking about saving water inside the home also today. We may have a couple little things that we overlap with, but um, you can see that we use a lot of water every day. And he said around 104. I have seen some quotes up to 150 a day. And I can imagine that during the summer, you know, we are using a little bit more water and um, those averages may be influenced. And less than 1% of the world's water overall is really usable as it is. And, um, you know, that's, that's not very much for all the people that we have that we need to provide this uh, essential ingredient for life for all of us. And I did find some research that said desalinated, meaning removing the salt from like salt water. It's like we have tons of water around Florida, right? But it's salt water. And that to um, remove the salt costs 10 times what it costs to use the water from an aquifer. Now I have this over here. It needs to be fact-checked and I have to run this. I, I have to be honest with you, but you're gonna hear things and see things. And as Florida, increases its population, there is a concern that we need to make sure that we protect our water supply. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sure that, you know, it's as serious as this. I tried to find the research that they used um, in this and I couldn't really find it. So just know, you know, we in Extension say it needs to be research proven and I can't find the research that they use to use these numbers. But the bottom line is, is our water is so valuable to us and so needed. Now, this is um, a graph from the university um, in Utah with that sponsors extension. And what I want you to see is I know it's a little blurry, but he did. He talked about the toilet. He talked about bathing. And, you know, basically those are the biggest uses within, within the household for our water. So we need to um, pay attention to all the areas, but especially those. So one of the things is Energy Star appliances um, are the most um, highly recognized and most efficient appliances when they have that Energy Star. So if you have to replace anything, please make sure that it is gonna give you the best outcome. And you can save um, up to around 3,800 gallons of water over the lifetime of the dishwasher. If um, you get a newer Energy Star and you're not using an older dishwasher. In the laundry, you can save around 2,000 gallons per year. And you know he showed you those toilets around 16,000 gallons per year. But if you um, make sure that you're, washing machine and your dishwasher um, is used only when it's full and used more or less frequently, you can save up to 300 to even 800 gallons a month. Now, obviously it depends on how many people are in your home, how many people are living there, how many loads you have to run. Now that does not include the energy savings um, by not using things as often. And so that's an environmental impact as well. So I'm gonna go over some things that may seem kind of simple or whatever things that you can do at home, but all these little things can add up. And he talked about um, wiping off dishes and that that's a very admirable thing to do in addition to um, just soaking your dishes ahead of time, putting just some water in them to help loosen things so that you can get it well wiped off. The issue here is if you were gonna run the dishwasher right away, it's a high energy dishwasher and it would could probably clean a lot of this mess off, but if it's gonna sit there a while, you could also add problems. You can start growing bacteria and things in your dishwasher. And we have to keep that food safety in mind as we do these things, because really that's equally important. So he mentioned running your dishwasher when it is full. Um, new technology cleans better and reduces soaking time if you have a full dishwasher and it's not gonna sit for a long time. 
and a full dishwasher load uses less than hand washing those same dishes. Now, once again, extension does not promote any one brand, but if you've seen the advertisement, um, the finish um, detergent for dishwashers it, online says, skip the rinse, how much we use. And it's a campaign that they're doing. If you go online, Google skip the rinse, you can join, and so far they do a daily count or update this, how many gallons of water have been saved so far. So once again, we're not promoting the brand, although I have nothing against that brand, um, but we are saying what they're doing is very admirable and trying to help us save our valuable water. Now doing fewer loads of laundry, you know, um, over, over years, depending on, you know, which generation you align yourself with, there have been rules to doing laundry. And for the most part, we separate colors. We separate um, fabrics and fibers. Now, the colors will still run. There is no guarantee. And matter of fact, over time, that has um, become more of a problem with time. But you can wash in cold water. If you're concerned about... Um, for example, COVID or um, colds or flus or just having things really clean, there are products out there and I'm only showing the Lysol because it's the only brand I know that's a laundry sanitizer. If you really wanna make sure things are um, sanitized when they're washed. However, if you dry in the dryer, um, that will also sanitize the clothing as well. Then um, the new newer models of washing machines use a lot less water. When I first got mine, I thought, how in the world is this ever going to be clean? Because there's hardly any water in there, but they're just as clean as they always have been. Now, the other thing is there's Shout, there's Color Keeper. There are other brands of what they call dye magnets out there that grab extra color. So I know nobody wants to turn everything pink by putting red and white together but I've, I've tried it, they work. So if you're gonna fill your washing machine a little more full and you wanna mix colors, try it, make sure it works for you, but I have never had them fail to use these sheets in there and be able to use a full washing machine. Um, water softeners um, do use water. The more efficient ones use less water. And um, it's, all it's all based on the hardness of the water to start with. <clears throat> and then if it's a demand initiated regeneration, that's a pretty long word that says basically if when the water needs softened, it's done on demand rather than it's just a timed water softener, it will use less water when it's done on demand than when it's timed. So that's something to consider if you're looking at water softeners. You don't have to have a whole house water softener. It can be done at the site of the faucet as well. So you don't have to always put in the whole house equipment. So he already mentioned that you turn off the running water when you're shaving, brushing your teeth, if you're washing your face, you know, when, when you're doing those kinds of things, don't have water just running. You can pour it, have it stay in the bowl and use it from there. But one thing that we always still need for um, sanitation and for food safety, keep the water running for the 20 seconds when we wash our hands. That's one time we're not going to give up on that one. Please keep the running water when you wash your hands. Then if there's a drought or um, a request to use less water just over time, it's up to you about making policies within your home as to how often you flush one thing I, I'm not able or willing to give up is the flush at use. Um, that's between you and your family to determine, but obviously if you don't you know, um, use less water. He talked about the low water toilets. There is also, um, and be very careful with this because you really want your toilet to function well. But there are times that you put a bottle of water in the tank away from all the um, equipment. And as long as it doesn't interfere, you will be able to use less water to actually flush with. And some people, I've never had this as an issue, but I've read about it where people just throw things in the toilet to get rid of them and then flush. And that's use a waste basket instead of the toilet um, for that use. 
I have not done this, but you know, it is a reason that you can now. I have boiled vegetables or like I boil corn or different kinds of things and I'll save the water, let it cool down and then use it to water my plants. There's some minerals and some um, things that are good for your plants in there. Just make sure you allow it to cool. You can wash your fruits and vegetables and use that water for watering plants. You can also use gray water, for example, from the bathtub to flush your toilet. Um, you don't, you don't pour it into the back of the toilet, you pour it directly, keep that gray water longer than 24 hours. It may start to grow some things, but there are times that you can use that, that water immediately and for other uses. So, um, these are just a list of some of the, um, places that I got my information. Most of them are from the university and then the Energy Star program and the EPA. So I'm willing to answer any questions. Great. Thank you, Ms. Luen and Jim. I'm checking the um, chat box. Here we do, we have one question. I really like this question, I already addressed that. It's from Ms. Eva. She asked what happened with the long irrigation water. It is a way to save water there. And uh, that's a, as, like I said, I love this question because yes, uh, more than half of the water use, uh, household water is used uh, on, on, on lawns. So next week's Water Wednesday, we will focus on water saving around your home. And I post the registration link there. If you want to learn how to save from your irrigation water, then that will be our talk. Mm, let me check our q and I see Jim already took care of that, but I think some people may have the same concern, I mean, same question to you regarding that water meter. So that water meter in front of your house, does that, uh, if you get water from city, does that belong to the homeowner or it belongs to the city? Well, it depends on the area. I know my area, you and it belongs to the city, but the homeowner is responsible for the maintenance of it. So uh, that's why I say you can go back and just make sure it's all cleaned up because the city's not going to do that for you. <laughs> it's your responsibility. And you obviously can turn off the water if needed at that location and check for water leaks. I would like to add something in here that I found out. Um, I had moved here recently, you know, within the last couple of years. And as we're doing this, I knew where the turnoff valve for my main water was at my previous home. And I was like, I better find this here, you know, not just assume. So I went out to that water meter and I can find a turnoff and I'm still looking for a turnoff and found out that um, I talked to the gentleman that was coming here to service the water. And I just said, um, what do I do in an emergency to turn off my water? He goes, oh, you have to call us. So by the time they would get here, I think that's dangerous. And I said, well, I would really like a turn off in the home and I'm not finding it. Now I have one at each faucet, but he said that not all houses are required to have them and that I may need to get a plumber in to get a turn off valve put in. So check and make sure that you have that ability to turn off that water because that's pretty important. Yeah, another thing that I wanna to add to that, Luann, is that with that shut off next to your house, um, Mine's not in the ideal, how I would prefer. I would prefer to have a metal uh, swing valve. Mine's the PVC ball valve. And so, uh, as you know, if you, don't, if you don't turn those on a frequent basis, those PVC ball valves will stick. And so it can be, be very, very hard to open. Um, so just, just FYI for, for people on that, because you don't want to be in an emergency situation and go out there and like, oh my gosh, I can't turn my ball valve. Yeah, those are good suggestions. Uh, that's also, I would suggest uh, like find out where's uh, your uh, shut off valves. So when emergency happens, uh, you don't need to look for where they are. And another, just like Jim mentioned, uh, even it's inside your house, uh, like those uh, emergency shut off valves, uh, 
doesn't need to be emergency shut off valves. So you still want to turn it on and off, just try it once in a while. Because Florida's water, like Ms. Luan mentioned, it's hard which means it's high in calcium. So if you don't like those, uh, use those valves, uh, when emergency happens, you probably will not be able to shut up the water. So that's what we see a lot, especially in older homes. So those are all good tips. Thank you. Um, another question here, because we are reaching, we, we still have 10 minutes. Um, the question is uh, what happened with the contamination of the water with detergents, grease, et cetera, I assume is as well important. Yes, it definitely is. So if you have a lot of greasy water, um, you know, I wouldn't put it out on my plants. Um, there are only certain times that you would use, Jim, can you jump in or? any of you could jump in on when um, any detergents may be or may not be used. It might be when you want to kill something like weeds in the driveway or something that you might pour something with detergent on it. But anything that's greasy, it needs to go on down the drain. Yeah, um, I can chime in. I know some of our soaps can actually contain phosphorus. So if you are trying to do any kind of gray water in your yard um definitely recommend you know rain barrels are a great way to save water first and then um you know if you are using any kind of soaps in your yard just make sure they're like a cast steel soap that's going to break down and not harm the environment or your plants all right so just uh i so i because that question it's related to gray water so just let you know, homeowners, uh, you can decide the best practice how to use gray water inside your house. But at this point, state of Florida, our building code still doesn't allow residential gray water reuse. And the main concern, just like our discussion here we have, is the, is the public health and how we can, um, just what's in the gray water, how can we avoid the public access to that? Great. I would like to clarify here, don't pour your greasy water. No, no, no. If you have a large amount of grease, if you've just had a little bit of grease on your dishes though, and you've washed them, that gray water, or if you've had grease on you and you've bathed and there might be grease in that water, be careful using it. For the most part, grease never goes down, but I'm talking about little bits of grease, but you're absolutely correct. Any large amounts of grease go into the trash can. Yeah, I've even seen those little Ziploc bags, like they're grease bags. And so you pour mm -hmm. it into there after you're frying or something, and then you put that in the trash. Right, I'm just talking about a little bit of greasy residue might not be appropriate on your plants or your garden. Great. So the next one, because we have a lot of questions here, I like to move along. Um, my computer is very slow. And how do we weigh the pros and the cons with uh, using water for cleaning things uh, such as uh, recyclables or plastic bags uh, so they are not thrown away? Who wants to address that? That's a really good question. So I see Miss Luen is uh, smiling. So <laughs> just want would you re would you re say the question just so I can? Yeah, so it's the pros and the cons of cleaning things uh, such as uh, recyclable or plastic bags. Should we clean it or we use uh, disposable? You know, that, that I don't have research. If anybody can help me back on that, that's a really good question because I do, like if I have a gently used plastic bag, I wash it out and reuse it rather than put it in the landfill, but it can't go in my dishwasher. It has to be something, but just with some soapy water that I can clean out. Now, while I'm using, you know, washing something else or soaking something, if there's a way to wash several at a time, those are things then that get into an issue. Um, you're gonna save water by not washing it and throwing it away, but you're also putting it in the landfill, which, we, which is not gonna help anything either. Yes. So 
I can comment a little. I don't have okay. the research on top of my head, but basically just like Ms. Luan said, you weigh it, it's like how you use it. So if you are interested, you can do a search. It's called a life cycle analysis. So it, it just like from which perspective you are weighing the pros and the cons. And from the life cycle analysis, it's the full cycle. So let's say we use water to wash plastic bags, but meanwhile, we also need resources to treat water. We also need the resources to deliver water. So it put everything, we call it, uh, it just from end to the, what's they call cradle to, I forgot right. the name. Anyhow, just it's just the whole life cycle. And there's something a little bit more specific. It can also be embedded water. So it's just the life cycle only on the water perspective. So you can see you throw it away, then how much water it's accumulated and you wash it What's the embedded water. Because when I say throw it away, not just going away, also associated with the landfill and what's that environmental impact. So I'm sorry, on top of my head, I, I cannot remember the data, but there are studies uh, existing it's about life cycle analysis so if you're interested you can search that and probably i will do some homework and search that and put in the uh, on our facebook page that's a good question and get us to do some homework um, and the next question it's uh, about the backflow valves so i will let jim handle that so the because you mentioned we, we we've been talking about shut off valves are they the same as the backflow valve? Uh, no, that's not the same as your backflow valve. Your backflow valve, if you live in a community, the backflow valve is located somewhere in your community. So that's not, that's not the same. All right. And uh, I have noticed that a serious problem, a problem that exists in my neighborhood is uh, that they have automatic sprinklers for yard and garden. They even activate it when it has rained, like in recent days. How can you make them change their mind in a friendly way and without being annoying or invasive? That's a really good question. So a little bit uh, spoiler alert, at next week we will focus on irrigation, but since it's uh, it came up for the second time. We do have two experienced uh, horticulture agent here and Miss Tina and uh, Jim. Jim has done a lot of irrigation. So do you want to just quickly comment on that? Tina, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so um, they were asking specifically about the community areas of the HOAs and I mean, really every system should have a rain shutoff valve or um, sensor, excuse me. And so that rain shutoff sensor will detect moisture, you know, rain and will automatically shut off the system. And so some municipalities actually offer free inspection, so I would definitely start by calling your utility provider and asking if they can assist, you know, either your HOA or your neighbors or you um, in determining if there is a rain sensor for the system. It is actually required by law um, that they do have to have that rain sensor, that rain shut off. Um, because yes, we get a lot of rain here and we don't want to have the irrigation going off not only for water conservation issues, but also it's not good for our plants because we're gonna have increased levels of moisture, increased levels of root rot, fungus, watering the weeds. And so we definitely wanna be calibrating our irrigation to work properly with the rain. Um, so I would start with calling your provider. I know in the city that I live in, they do offer free ones. You have to buy it and then they'll credit you back on your bill for a rain sensor installation but that's really what you're looking for is that rain sensor um, for that. Yeah, and, and that's excellent advice. And also one thing that in the past, when, um, when I dealt in these situations, you know, you have, whenever you're approaching your neighbors or somebody like that who has a broken rain sensor, 
know, there's several things you can, several ways you can approach this. The conservation aspect, the, the, uh, the not healthy for plants hits home for a lot of people, uh, but also, you know, explain that, you know, it's complete waste of money that you're doing too. So in order to save money, you can, you can make sure you have a well, a well functioning rain sensor that's not irrigating during rain when it doesn't need it. And like I said, some people pay for their water. And so you can go that route as well. Yeah, and feel free to blame us. You know, you can say that, hey, I just saw this great webinar with um, some experts from UF and they're recommending, you know, rain sensor and that, you know, there's more information. There is a ton of information from UF IFAS on irrigation, rain sensors, and like Elon said, join next week to learn more too. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for all the tips and promoting next week's World Wednesday, because I see uh, several questions coming up related to irrigation. So I highly encourage you to join us next week to learn more about how to save water around your home, which is your irrigation system. And if you have specific questions, you can also contact your local extension office. So we almost have one extension office in each county. Some ex, um, county may have two extension offices. So, so find your local extension office and call them. And they will um, also be and they will also be able to address your specific questions. Because we are running out of time, and I still want to address uh, a couple more. Probably, um, let's see. We have more questions here, so we can take care of two more questions. Uh, one question is uh, um, back to Miss Luen's reuse your water. So when I change out my water from fountain, um, can you pour that water into public drainage? Um, I could use some help on that one. Um, I, I don't know what all is in the fountain. Do you treat the fountain water? Have you added something to it? See, these are things that depend, there's other questions we have. So if somebody else could help entertain that question, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, oh, Jim, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I just, just like what Luann said, I think we need to figure out what is exactly in the, in the water. I can yeah. add um, that I know if we were to treat it like pool water that, you know, assuming it does have some chlorine in it, um, it is pretty municipality specific. So some municipalities allow you to just discharge pools while others, if you're highly urbanized like city of Orlando, um, you know, it, it just really varies. So I would check with your local municipality first. Um, I know here in Seminole County, they do allow some discharging of pools, but it has to be onto your lawn. You can't just put it into the storm drain or the stormwater pond. Um, it can't be causing erosion or anything like that. So, and then I think there's only like once or twice a year, you can't do it all the time. So I would uh, treat that like discharging a pool and check with your local municipality as to what they recommend with that. Good, awesome. good suggestion. Um, so we have another question here. It's uh, how to prevent toilet leaks. Is there a flap that best recommended? Sewer cost expensive, which is sewer is three times more expensive than your drinking water cost. So Jim, would you recommend? Uh, yeah, would you I don't, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't have any brands, recommended brands. A lot of times you get what you pay for, right? So you get a quality brand, but as far as a specific brand, no, I don't, I don't have one for you. Good. Um, I see more questions. So, so this came first. <laughs> um, that will be our last question. Can you please elaborate about water quality for drinking? Uh, <laughs> so I don't know, Ms. Luen, if you want to comment on that or you want me to take care of that? Um, you know, I. I think water quality for drinking means that it's tested and approved and it's what we call potable, meaning drinkable, but I, I'm gonna let you take it from there, you then. Oh, thank, okay. <laughs> so the reason it's, uh, this is a really big question. So I don't know specifically what you're asking for. So water quality, it's, uh, is that from municipality and is that from your private well? 
So municipality water, if you want to know the water quality, then you can contact your local utility request for your drinking water quality report. Uh, they release that at least once a year. And it's, uh, um, that will be your, um, that's your right to obtain that quality report. And if you get your water from um, a private well, then you need to test that. So this is a, it's a, it's a very simple question, but it's also a very comprehensive question. I can put a link in the chat box, which uh, um, has a little bit more details about uh, drinking water quality. Um, it's, a, it's not a, a publication from University of Florida. We're still working on that publication. It's uh, from Penn State, but it will give you an overall idea what the drinking water quality means. Yeah, and we do have um, our partner from the city of Sanford Utilities, Bill Marcu, oh, wow. available. And so if Bill, if you have anything to add to that question about how you handle water quality standards and your water quality report, just as an example for people, obviously it's different. Oh, <laughs> uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Well, um, all the utilities have to comply the, with the uh, Safe Drinking Water Act. And as part of that, um, we do uh, what is called the con Consumer Confidence Report. We euphemistically call the Water Quality Report. There's a series of um, elements that we have, uh, constituents that we have to test for every year. And, and then there's some that um, vary by year to year and such. All the utilities have to send that out to, to their customers, post it publicly on their websites. Um, it is a very comprehensive uh, program and it um, helps ensure the uh, quality and the safety of the water that's uh, served to the public. Um, so in general, in terms of, you know, with all the, uh, the bottled water that's purchased out there and different drinking water or uh, water softening systems and such, that is a matter of taste. Uh, in terms of public water supply, we have a safe uh, quality water here in the city, in the state of Florida. And, uh, and, and that, like I said, is insured uh, through the water um, quality testing and the consumer, co consumer, consumer confidence report and the safe drinking water app. So it's a matter of taste if you wanna do something in terms of the bottled water or to, to soften your water. In terms of safety and actual quality, it's highly regulated, um, the, the pub, potable and pub, um, public water systems. And um, I encourage people to look for that in their mail or on their um, city or, or their <coughs> utilities uh, website for information. That should, um, has to come to them before July 1st of this year and annually. So. So be looking out, it's coming up soon. Thank you, Bill. Really appreciate you hopping in there. And just one other quick tip that, you know, we can all do is just grab a, a water bottle and reuse this every day, you know, to fill it up with that potable safe water and, um, you know, contribute to conservation as well. Great, I think that's a perfect ending to end today's talk. So with that, I thank you for everyone's attention and for your time. And thank you, Ms. Luen and uh, Mr. Jim for this uh, wonderful presentation. And as uh, Ms. Tina said, you will receive an email. If you're a city of Sanford resident, you will uh, receive an email from her. So please be on the lookout for the email. And with Actually, that- all all oh. participants, um, oh, all yeah. participants are welcome to uh, complete the survey that we emailed to you. And um, as long as you've participated in this webinar and you complete the survey and you're willing to drive to pick it up, we'll be offering the free shower heads this Saturday. So we'll let you know if you're a lucky winner. Odds are pretty good. We have 100 shower heads and only about you know 30 so people here on Zoom. So uh, we look forward to working with you to get you those. And then also I did put in the chat, we have one more event for Earth Day tomorrow, Trees for Earth Day. So come check out the webinar. We are also giving away free trees, 100 free trees. So please join us tomorrow. Check out that Zoom registration link. And thank you so much uh, for partnering with us, Elin and Jen. Oh, thank and you. Bill and everyone.
And uh, you did remind me, I almost forgot to, I put in the chat box, it's uh, our this webinar evaluation. It's very simple, will take you no longer than one minute. Uh, just tell us uh, if how, um, what you have learned from this webinar and how we can improve this webinar. I post the link, it's a short link, bit.ly link, it's a Water Wednesday eval. So I will appreciate you can take that link and someone asked about the recordings. I also put it there. All the events uh, will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to watch the previous Water Wednesdays, uh, you can also um, go to that YouTube channel and find the topics you're interested. So with that, um, I appreciate your time and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday afternoon. Bye now.